Good evening, Look. Queensland Premier League <laughs> fans. Welcome to the Queensland Premier League Bowl Show. I am the host, John the Doge. Once won a game of Connect Four in just three moves. <laughs> And of course, my co host, Bakesy! Hello, hey, Bakesy! 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 How you going, mate? Very well. Back good. here on a Thursday night, which we are every week, every day, for, uh, or every week from now on, which is good. We are, yeah, Thursday, Thursday suits night. a little better, so. Good. Big night ahead. We've got a couple of, couple of future goats here with us, so. Yeah, we're humbled oh, by some present, yeah. <laughs> got our special guests tonight, of course, are from the Blaze, uh, Jacob and Kane Nelson. Welcome, boys. Hey, guys, guys, how are we? Good, good thank you. Well done on the weekend. You had a good win against uh, the Mighty Power. Yeah, snuck over the line in a tight one. It was a really good game. Really, really enjoyed it. We always have a close battle with Hamilton, so that was uh, really, really good. It was a good game. I enjoyed it too. It was, uh, we got beaten, but I was a bit dirty about that. But other than that, it was well, yeah, the contest was did awesome. Did you just play at the Powerhouse? Was it at the at Powerhouse, Hamilton? yeah. At the Powerhouse, mate. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so big weekend of bowls. There was some good results. We'll get yeah. to in a second. We will. Uh, we just got results this week, so we're, we we've do. come prepared. We do, yeah. We're all over it this week. <laughs> uh, it's a very happy uh, Dolphin Cove this week too, mate. After their first win of the season, so. Yeah, well, they've uh, I think they've told me to back against them for the remainder of the competition to fire them up. But uh, you know they had a massive win, so travel up to Drayton. It's not easy. So well under yeah. them. Yeah, it was well tipped by you again there, mate. Was, yeah, changed it at the last minute. Yeah. yeah, it was good. I argued the point too, and you made sure that you got your tip in. Well, actually, if, if I remember correctly, you said you can't actually do that. So, you know, I like to follow rules, as everyone knows. So, uh, I think we have to stick with my original tip, don't we? Yes. Uh, uh, no. Uh, our, of course, uh, we can't do the show without our wonderful sponsors, uh, which you can see behind me, but uh, <clears throat> Smith & Co., Realty uh, are the major sponsors of our show. They're awesome guys, Shannon. Uh, we well, yeah, we had a good chat in the first yeah. week and got to catch up with them after the show as well and a bit of a chat. So a bit of a family man and very family orientated and local to the area. So it seemed like he was good at what he does. Yeah, he does. Uh, and of course, where we do the show, Paradise Point Bowls Club, uh, BCIB Club Musgrove, home of the Premier League finals. Hence, like the naming rights sponsors for the Premier League and someone else let's go with itp queensland Woo no, no, no. <laughs> all right that's everybody uh mate big weekend round four results and the ladder it was well i can tell you what happened with our game but we'll get to um the results so yeah well i'll, I'll start us off if you like yeah, we'll awesome. go through our list here we've got them all printed this week so i don't have to try and remember uh but our first game was pine rivers pirates against the burley heads uh, so we had Ryan Burnett against Gary Pearson. Ryan Burnett, 20 shots to 15. We had Troy Somerville, 9 shots to 20 shots against Gary Kelly. And Aaron Houston, 10 shots to Corey Wedlock, 25 shots. So the win overall to Burley there. I can't see the overall score. Here we go. Up the top, 39 to 60. So we still, uh, we've still got the print off, off of the bowls, link, and It's our first week with it. So we're just trying to find everything there. But uh, yeah, it's a, that's a good win for Burley. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Pine have been going pretty well, and a home game against them is always a nice win. So, <coughs> uh, looking good, the uh, carryover champs actually. They're going, yeah, going we've, we've got them Friday night. So, oh, do you? We do. Yes, uh, it's a big test for us. We had a tough loss against Tweed over the weekend, close game, but just blew out at the end. But uh, yeah, they played Port Beach on Sunday. Eh? Oh, do they? Yeah. Oh, no, they did. Play oh, they did. They, yeah, yeah, they yeah. had a good win there. Oh yeah, the first team to beat Broadbeach too, so yep. uh, grand final replay. I think only one team's beaten them so far, isn't it? It's, it was, oh, it was oh okay. <laughs> <There we go. laughs> Alright, our next mate, you going to do the next one mate? Or? Yep, I will do the next one, it is uh, Hamilton and Belmont. <laughs> <laughs> oh sorry uh, mate, I didn't realise that, it's my fault. And I can't read it, so Mark Armstrong Got beaten. I can't read it. Sorry. Oh, can you? Twenty four seventeen. Need your glasses. I do need my glasses. Uh, I got beaten by lots, and Nicky one by one. Nick got the one twenty one twenty. So uh, I played Kane. We had a good game, mate. It was enjoyable. Yeah, it was close the whole way. Close the whole way. I think the last four years that we've played, we've had the exact same rink draw. Oh, really? All three of them. <laughs> yeah. Dage always play each other. So. I think we had a draw last year, yeah. and this year was... Always comes down to the last end, which it did again. Yeah, yeah we were chasing, a, ch chasing the rink win when we uh, dropped the five last end, so other than that, it was pretty close. And Yeah, it was a good game of bowls. The atmosphere was good. 
Uh, outstanding, actually. Like, it's one of the better atmospheres I've played in ever in bowls. It was really, really good. Like, there was pr plenty of sideline noise and whatnot. I think a few of the Karina boys come <laughs> yeah, down. Yeah, they did, they did. So, uh, Mickey Ashworth and Joshy and a few of our mates got down to for a look and whatnot. And it was, it Travis O'Reilly, really you're in fine form on the weekend, mate, uh, <laughs> from the sidelines there. Uh, never seen anyone get kicked out of the hammo ever in my life at the powerhouse. So, uh, um, and there's been a few dusties, but um, well, congratulations on being the first. Well done, mate. Um, yeah, no, it was a good night, though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, congratulations on your win. It was a good win to the Blaze. Uh, I think that makes your season two and two now, or three and one? Three, three and one. one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very start. good. Great yeah. start. Very yeah. good start. Very good start. Third of the way through. Next. All right, our next matchup. Yep. We had Helensvale Hawks 70 shots, <laughs> defeated Al Jester All Stars 40 shots on three rinks. Uh, Brett Wilkie 25, defeated Des Can Jr. 15. Matty Lucas 20, defeated Colin Lipton 16. And Andrew Howie 25, defeated Matty Bouse 9 shots. So, it's a, yeah, it's a tough day for Al Jester. They would have probably went down with a bit of confidence going to Helensvale, but. Um, yeah, that's a bit of a rough day for them. When you lose on three, it's never, never nice. But they got hammered too. Yes. Um, that's, a, that's a that's a massive win for Andrew. Like no, Andrew Howie, we all know he's a great player. But 25-9 over Manny Bouse, like Judd Percy playing three, Gilly playing two, and Wade Clayton. That's a pretty solid rink. Like you would, you wouldn't expect that result too often. You wouldn't think. But Helensvale, uh, obviously, always. One of the benchmark sides, tough, always tough side to go and play. At yeah, Hellensvale. so they're always tough to beat. And <laughs> yeah, you sort of need everyone. It is a tough place to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Hamilton are there this Saturday, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wonder who we're going to tip there. We'll stop the rot. We'll stop the rot. Don't you worry about that. But uh, yeah, now well done, the Hellensville Hawks. That's a good win for them. That keeps them up in the mix. I'm not really sure how they're going overall. It's obviously with. Uh, all the game changes and whatnot. The, the, the latter is a bit funky in terms of games played, but it is how it stands, and it'll eventually catch up as we yeah, get back into the one, season. Yeah. Like I know for us at Muzzy, we've we've got five games in the next two weekends, so we'll uh, we'll catch right up because we've only played yeah, two. Yeah, you so playing far. like a triple triple header near yeah, not this not this weekend, the next weekend, oh, next Friday, weekend. Saturday, Sunday, yeah, yeah, and a uh, double header this weekend, Friday and Saturday. So travel oh, yeah. down to Burley Friday and host Drayton on sun Saturday. Be good. Uh, be interesting to see the atmosphere on a Friday night. How it compares? Yeah, I think mean, most people enjoy going to Burley and playing. It's a great spot to play bowls, and um, yeah, they're, they're obviously one of the competition front runners. So it's, it's we're going to have to be on our game. And heard the greens are probably a fraction slower than a few others around, but you know that, that doesn't really mean anything. So, a mud runner from way back, the old Darwin days. <laughs> Up and at them. Up and at them. <laughs> yeah, Sunday's still better at Burley. You can keep going with the results. Okay, yeah, I'll save you reading, mate. Uh, so next up we had Brawl Beach uh, against the Nogra Eagles. So Brawl Beach 83 on three rings, defeated the Nogra Eagles 44. Uh, Aaron Sheriff, 30 shots, defeated Stuart McCosh 10. Uh, Ryan George Peter Bester, <laughs> those didn't know. 29, defeated James Wise 13. And Aaron Tees, 24, defeated Louis Stumbrus, 21. So, yeah, a bit of a, um, always going to be a, a big ask for a Nogra there, I think. But Louis and uh, Tees, look like they must have had a good game. So, I'm sure a Nogra would have loved to get that rink up at the end. But, yeah, we're down on three and Royal Beach on the march. Well, we, we tipped all of us three on Royal Beach and that was... Oh, well, <laughs> I still think they're going to struggle this this year. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I think so. I mean, they, they had a great win against Al Jester, which you know I'm, I think Al Jester might rue towards the end of the season. But um, yeah, we, we don't like to wish ill against any side. But I think Inogra are going to struggle. They, I think they're in for a pretty long season. But until they come out and belt Muzzy, <laughs> <laughs> it's on the cards. Yeah, Sean Baker's rink costing them. Yeah, she was funny because uh, we, when we played Tweed uh, last weekend, we, the rink draw turned out that I played Peter Taylor, which you I think you picked to Muzzy getting belted on one rink with me against Tails, but you got up, I think. I, I snuck in, but yeah, but um, they play well. We, we probably should have beat them by more, but we dropped a bad five late, and 
yeah, Diggers Rink just um, fell a few behind. Like Adam McEwen playing three for Twist, he had a great game. Jeezy drew some good shots towards the back end. And, and uh, yeah, Sammy White had a draw with Turles. So old Tongy was in fine form. He got a few jacks in the ditch, so you heard him before you saw him. But <laughs> 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 All righty, our next game. Here I am waffling on. Uh, we had Drayton, 57 on one and a half rinks against Paradise Point, 72. Uh, Blake Nan, 17 shots, had a draw with John O'Davis, 17 shots. That would have been a great game. Two great players there. Blake Nan, particularly in great form at the moment. Uh, Robbie Hammond, 13, defeated by Wilson Alexander, 36. And Jakey Wren, 27 shots, defeated Darren Christie, 19. So that's a, uh, hey, that's a big win there for Paradise Point. I'm surprised, but Wilson was here early. I'm surprised he wasn't hanging around to hear his name I called th I out him, yeah, I yeah. thought he might have. He, he might be a little bit humble. He didn't want to be, know he was being talked about. <laughs> but I, 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 obviously it couldn't have been correct because the score doesn't match. But I heard he at one stage he was up 38-1 after eight ends. So obviously that's not true because he, he won 36-13. But he must he, have been... It uh, was up 21-3 after 10 ends. 10 yeah. ends. 21-3 after 10, yeah. okay. Or they after 8 off, or something like that, yeah. They went off halfway through for Lightning as well. Halfway yeah. Halfway through, I think. Okay. Yeah. I was just being told not long ago that uh, Jono played a monster on his last, with his last bowl to get the, uh, the, the draw. It must so. have been a good one because yeah. I've had about 17 people since I walked in here telling me that. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Jono's bowl. Eight people he's told you good, twice and one other. <laughs> he's in good touch. He's in good touch. I think Jono's dropped a rink yet, hasn't he? Uh, John O'Day, I'm not sure on that. Actually, that's one thing that we he's haven't lost, really got one. this year oh, is our skipper's, skipper's ladder. It's huh? yeah. one thing we haven't really thought about this year with the new results and whatnot. It's a skipper's ladder or a do, uh, team of the week You can't access thing. it. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. But we, yeah, yeah. We, we should probably get on top of that. Because I, I think with all the new... Obviously, we, we said there's going to be teething issues with the new bowls link, but I, in the past, we used to have a uh, you know the best-performed skip rink, but... Now with the how detailed the results are, you can actually define who's the best player in each position, like who's been the most successful, like in yeah. front of lead second. So we may look at obviously it's gotta go through boards and all that, this is silly now, but we may look at oh, like a an MVP rink for the year rather than just the best skips rink because you might have a lead that chops the changes a rink two or three times that goes through the season undefeated without anyone noticing. So Yeah. It's yeah. uh, it would be good to know that because yeah it, we might have to get I think next we might have to get someone on top of that else in the game. Well, me and what you I'll don't, do is we don't do any work, so we'll have to pass it on to someone else. I'll but. just take a note of it to bring the <laughs> tournament director tomorrow just to get on top of it. He's a cat, that yeah. Blake. It's no good. Yeah. Don't do anything. There you go. Just get Bruce. Bruce, you're noting that, mate. Bruce, <laughs> yeah. Just get the tournament director onto that tomorrow, can you? Yeah. <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, next game was Tweed Heads, 62 on a one and a half. Rinks defeated Musgrave Hill, 53. Uh, ben Twist, 27, defeated Ryan Digby, 13. Peter Taylor, 18, lost to Sean Baker, 23. And Wayne Turley, 17, drew with Sammy White, 17. So that's enough of that game. Move along to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a good game. I tell you what, the green ran really well. We, we rocked up and it looked like a little bit of an Indian green top. But yeah, it would have ran a nice 16. Yeah, nice. It, yeah, it's beautiful yeah. down there. I mean, it's it's always a pleasure going to Tweed and playing bowls, but I so said when we walked in, it looked a little greener and with all the rain around it. Oh, this might be a bit sluggish right up my alley, but no, nah, she ran she ran nicely. So, well done to Tweed. Well done, Tweed. You're well the done, Tweed. You're the tongue. You're the tongue. 23. All right, our next game, Belly Head 72 defeated Broad Beach 52. Uh, so we had Gary Pearson, 14, defeated by Aaron Tees, 27. Gary Kelly, 34, defeated Aaron Sheriff, 9. And Corey Wedlock, 24, defeated Ryan George Peter Besta, 16. So <laughs> that's, a, that's a, yeah. I've got to play Gary, I believe, on Friday night. Our rink draw's done, so <laughs> that's, that's good. I can probably top you there, Omar. But <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a massive win, isn't it? You wouldn't, you wouldn't yeah, like... Yeah, big, big one. Like for that, that margin's big. Yeah, I mean, obviously we all know how good Aaron Sheriff is and, and Gary Kelly, but that sort of margin against Omar, that wouldn't happen too often, you wouldn't imagine. <clears throat> yeah, expect them both to be there come finals time anyway, so yes. what happens in the rounds? Well, I think Brawl Beach beat them in the rounds last year and then mm, lost the grand finals, so this, mm, 
Interesting. Yeah. Well, I'm not tipping anything on Broadbeach just yet. No, it's... I caught it last year and... Oh, praise Allah. <laughs> and that is it for our results. <laughs> done. Well done, mate. Yep. Well done. And that's uh, our ladder as it stands up on your screen now. So we've got uh, Billy Head's Water Dragons on top. Belmore Blaze on fire sitting in second. Uh, the Western Outlaw sitting in third. Ellensville Hawks in fourth. And Pine Rivers Pirates round out the five. So still a long way to go. Like I said, looking up there, some team, well, only one team has only played two, but some have played Must three, some have played five. So, you know, it is a bit, bit of a mix, but it just makes it interesting, doesn't it? It makes you think. It makes you put your thinking cap on and well, try it, and figure some stuff out for yourself. It's one of those things where you see you guys down there and only two games played, but uh, at the same time, you look at the ladder and you go, well, there's a bit of pressure now. Like, if we don't win the next one, then we're still going to be hovering down there somewhere. Yep. And, uh, yeah, the pressure starts to mount because you aren't in tune with what's, you know, you haven't... Well, then, like, so the next two weeks for us can pretty much make or break our season. If we... You know, out of our five games, if we come out and lose four of them or five of them, then yeah, that puts us up under an awful lot of pressure. But it can work on the flip side as well. We, we come out and win five, like mm -hmm. it puts us in a great spot. So we'll, we'll see what happens. We're in for a couple of big weeks and fingers crossed. Yeah, you'll probably win two of those five. Yeah. I was going to say, same sort of goes for Helen Sale Hawks at the moment. They're sitting fourth, but they've played a game less than everybody else in the five there. Yeah. So they're thinking, oh, well, we've got a game up our sleeve as is, and we're already sitting in the five at the moment. So yeah. that's a nice little buffer for them to have. But then one loss, forward. one loss, it puts them back in the, you know, back in the fours pack, and you're stuck there, you know, like, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's why the game between us on the weekend, you guys and us, was an important one for both of us. After the third of the way through, both teams sitting two and two, like, so yeah. two and one, that that extra win makes a big difference on your confidence anyway. Yeah, I mean, and like most of you, the rinks will hopefully come into it and, you know, I love the scoring format, how they, they reward rink wins rather than just having your win points and then your margin. I think it always, uh, always mm. comes down to it. Should be a tight finish for the for that fifth. Yeah, yeah. This year, oh, well, yeah, generally is. Like, we... We like to think that we've got a pretty strong competition and sort of third to tenth is usually not an awful lot in it. Obviously, we normally have one or two that might shrink away, but, yeah, that, yeah. that, that sort of the best middle seven or middle eight, it's, it's always pretty tight. So hopefully, hopefully so, fingers crossed. Muzzy just streak away and everyone else can battle it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how it's looking right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're good. We're sitting good. Brisbane yeah. Heat three weeks ago at bottom of the ladder. <laughs> yeah. They're playing the yeah, final it, at the moment. So. Yeah. But you know yeah, why? The because they were two games behind everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> Strategic. Chris, you're a genius. All right. Uh, here comes my favourite part, uh, the yes. round five and Ooh. the tips. Can you read this one? Is this big enough print yeah, for you? Yeah, I've got this yeah, yeah. Um, girls, if you're home, can you look around for daddy's glasses? Because uh, I can't find it. Would you like to start us off seeing? I will. Well, I'm going to kick Pelicans. us off with a Friday night uh, blockbuster over at Burley. Burley had Dragons against the Musgrave Hill Pelicans, which we've just talked about. But uh, GK Gary Kelly up against Bakesy Boy here. Going to be that's going to be a cracker. Uh, Barry Lest up against Ryan Digby and Corey Wedlock up against Leroy Schrainer. So yeah, uh, yeah, blockbuster. Uh, kick yeah, off, kick us off um, Premier League weekend. Yeah, I mean it's whenever you play Burley, it's. It's you and I are in for a tough one. I think that that ring draw doesn't look too bad. Um, I think Diggers and Barry will be a good game. Um, a couple of lefties battling it out. So no, we'll, we'll travel down to Burley. We're gonna have a great night. We'll, we'll play some bowls. I'm sure it'll be competitive. Um, you know, we all know what like Burley. If, if they get on top of us, they can really dig the heel in and, and they can make it hurt. So we need to come out strong and hold them through the middle stage and just and finish as strong as we start. So big one for us and yeah we'll give it a red hot crack good luck to you sir thank you mate so we do you want me to tip first to give you some time to think yeah or? no no i don't need to think about this one mate yeah i've read it out so i'll go um i'll go the dragons unfortunately beautiful uh, beautiful underdog we love that uh two one <laughs> dragons uh yeah i'll go i'll go early as well um i think Barry might get up this week. He hasn't actually had a win yet, so I reckon that rink will get going. And I think the other two ranks for Burley are undefeated. So okay, yeah. So yep. I'll go. I'll go Burley on one. 
Yeah, I'm going to stick with Burley as well for the win, but I think it's going to be one and a half ranks each. Oh, I, uh, okay. Is this your first game with Lee playing? Yes. Yes. So yes, that's, we, uh, we do welcome that's Leroy a pretty big uh, this for, week. So yeah. recently had a birthday too. Happy birthday, Leroy. Yeah, so I think that's a really big in for uh, Muzzy. So I reckon um, Lee will get his rink up, but it'll be one and a half each, and Burley will sneak over the line by a couple of shots. We'd probably take that result, but um, but no, I think I think we're going to fire. We beat them last year. I think we're going to beat them again this year. Three nil, definitely. Thanks, sir. That's and good. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll just sneak in by one of the other two boys. Will fire right up. <laughs> Alrighty, our next game. Round five. Round five. Yes. This so uh, this is uh, the actual start of the round. We've got the Burley Dragons up again against the Paradise Point Dolphins. So I got a, lots of sets of eyes on me at the moment with this tip, but uh, we haven't got a ring draw for this. This is just the teams. Um, some of the, the clubs have done their ring draw, some haven't, so not much of it. But our, our skips for uh, Burley, Barry Lester, Corey Wedlock, and Gary Kelly. And our skips for Paradise Point Dolphins is Wilson Alexander, Jono Davis, and Darren Christie. So, yes, big one. Big one for Paradise Point. This is, um, oh, I think anyone that plays Burley, it's a big one for them, but this is a good chance to see where they're at against the uh, one of the stronger clubs. It is. <laughs> it is. What's your tip? <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah, I think they're going to be they're going to suff, be suffering there from their loss the night before, so they're going to come out fire and um, yeah. I think, I think, uh, unfortunately, although I might get shivved in the car park, I think yeah, Burley Burley on three, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I'm going to echo Burley winning, but I'm going to go 2-1 with uh, Jono to get his rank up. I rate Jono incredibly mm -hmm. highly. Yeah, I'll, I'll go Paradise for the win. Bit of an upset yes. for the club. <laughs> <laughs> go 2 1. Uh, they were good to me last week, the, the Dolphins, so uh, I am going to go Burley 3 0. <laughs> um, <laughs> Burley 3 0 for uh, the Doge, mate. Uh, um, that was brutal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> take him off the tab. He's off the tab. <laughs> uh, Burley can still play average and still get up 3 0 in this one, I think. Um, no, oh, joking. Just joking. Boom. <laughs> Do you? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, can you go Burley on four then? Or is that, is that possible? Or? <laughs> no, no. Um, yeah, I think Burley will, they will, they will get home. It'll be a good one, but. Um, it's just uh, the neck turning on a day game down there, so I think Paradise will struggle and uh, Burley will get up. It'll be a close one, though. I think uh, uh, just under 10 shots, about eight shots to Burley. Nice. Would you like to do our next round? I will. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> As I reminded you like this week, who it was last week. <laughs> this is the live stream game. Ooh, um, yep. <clears throat> At the Eagles' nest, the Nogra Eagles up against the Tweed Heads Ospreys. Uh, Stewie McCosh up against Adam McEwen skipping this week. Um, Mark Williams, Peter Taylor. Up, oh, sorry, Mark Williams and Peter Taylor. And then Louis Strumbus and Wayne Turley are the skippers for respective sides. Um, a bit more of a tougher game for Tweed up, up there at Inogra, and they play pretty good there. Yeah, I think mean, everyone... Finds it tough when they go to a nugger. It can be uh, a tricky place to go and play, um, especially if you don't find it early. But uh, yeah, they're missing missing Twisty and Disco this weekend. So Sam Barkley will be skipping that one, and Jeezy play well against us. No, I think Adam McEwen's skipping. Oh, sorry, Adam. Sorry, yeah. look on the wrong. Adam McEwen. Um, yeah, Jeezy play well against us last week when he was playing three for Twisty. So I think they'll lose too much there. Um, but yeah, this should be a good game. Actually, it's a good chance for a nugger to you know. Tweet out a loss against Drayton, and um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. Good, good chance for Nogger to get another winner. You called it out, mate, so I'll let you tip first. Yeah, I'm going to go Tweed on two. I don't think Adam and Bales will handle the carpet well very much at Nogger, mm -hmm. and I think they'll get beaten uh, on their rink, but Tails and Turles, uh, they'll get up. Uh, I wouldn't. I would even. Uh, I would even skip Tongi this week at Anogra because uh, he goes good there. But I'll go tweet on two. Um, I'll go another upset. I'll go Anogra on one. Clinton Bailey playing third. 
I don't reckon that combination will quite get going. No. So yeah, Siri McCosh get a good win over Clinton, and yeah, on one. Well, they'll be back down to two yeah, next week. Well, Stewie has got the uh, you got the punts playing three, so yeah, I think he'll be in the Clinton all game, and yeah. Greeny might crumble. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm not going to be quite as bold. I'm going to stick with Tweed, and I think they're going to get up on three rinks, actually. I think they've uh, got a bit too much class across the three rinks, so they'll, uh, they'll get it done. Yeah, um, I've got to think I, I'm sticking with Tweed as well. I think on two and a half rinks. So I think uh, I think uh, Louis might fire up a little bit and get a draw with Turles, but, yeah, I think two and a half rinks to Tweed. All righty. Our next game. <laughs> oh, another big one. The Musgraveville Pelicans <coughs> yeah, versus the Western Outlaw. So again, this is this uh, rink draw isn't done. This is just the, the teams as they stand, as you can, can see on the screen. Uh, Musgraveville Pelicans skips. We've got Sean Baker, Ryan Digbury, and Lee Schrainer, and the Western Outlaws: John Hammond, Jake Rin, and Jason Grundon. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, Robbie Hammond um, playing three for his young fella, young, young Johnny, so young Johnny will be, will be fired up and ready to go. Are you um, playing in the home? Yes, yeah, we're at, uh, we're at Muzzy and the, the green's running nice, so probably pretty similar to what, what theirs is, I'd imagine, maybe a fraction slower, but yeah, it's a big one for us. We, um, although coming off our massive win on the, the day before, we should be pretty fired up and hopefully be able to back it up, but... I don't think <laughs> I think uh, I think we're gonna get up two one in this one. I think I might just suffer a little loss and the boys will just just carry me over the line, so cool. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm gonna stick with Muzzy, two one as well. But I uh, I reckon it'll be really, really close within five shots actually. I yeah. think uh, I think Johnny Hammond will come out and I think we'll have a really, really good game and uh, okay. I reckon it'll come down to the wire actually. So Well I hope yeah. I don't play him then. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon the same as well, Musgrave on two, but I reckon John will get a win up. He's been playing really good bowls, so okay. I think yeah. I reckon he might get a win up first week skipping, so yeah, Musgrave on two just. Uh no brainer for me, uh, Musgrave on three. Three nil Musgrave. Uh they'll pump him. Yep. No good. Don't think uh yeah, it's just three nil, Muzzy. Sorry boys. <laughs> Kiss it there. Kiss it. Thanks, mate. Kiss it there. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, thanks, Vards. Yes, we are actually, you can't see it on our screen, but to the left of us is the cricket. Yeah. So um, we are yeah, keeping seven. up to date. <laughs> All right, mate. Uh, so we got next up. Oh, oh I did that one. So you're up, buddy. Seeing as how we've got a couple of the. We uh, have the Blaze. Second place runners back against the Ponderers Pirates. Mm -hmm. uh, it is at the Inferno. Done. It's at the Inferno. Yeah. Um, Kay Nelson skipping uh, uh, Ryan Burnett. Brandon Egan up against Troy Somerville and Jacob Nelson up against Aaron the mm. Hubel Houston. Uh, it's going to be a cracker. This, this should be a good game, I mm. reckon. This, uh, yeah, I think mean, that, that ring troll looks good. I think you've got three three good games there, uh, particularly Burner and Kane, a couple of form players at the moment. Um, yeah, it's going to be a big one. I'm glad. Um, We've actually got one change out this week. Indy Conlon's not available. We've got young um, Cody Jarrett coming up to play three for Kano this weekend. Which okay. is, uh, I'm really happy for Cody. He's been playing really, really good bowls. So that's a, a really I saw that thing he put on Facebook for earlier too, the junior senior days that he's trying to get up up and going. Uh, so well done to him. Hopefully that takes off. And anyone that maybe hasn't seen that, make sure you go check out his page. I'm, I'm sure the post be floating around a fair bit now, but he just wants to host a number of junior senior days at a host of different venues so it's doing a great job for junior bowls yeah really he seems really really passionate so. about it so good on him it should be a good game uh cody and riley um obviously they are sort of like coached by berno and caitlin as well when they were at kiwana so yeah yeah that'll be a good match i reckon with those those two there my tip is it? Your tip, yep. mate. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, He's trying to stall. <laughs> I wasn't falling for it. No, nah, no. Nah. Look, it's um, this is a tough one for me. I, I'm nearly going to pick a draw. Um, Ooh, is it I'm bonus nearly going to pick is a draw. Bonus wait, there, Robbie. Just wait there, mate. Are you going to um, go for the uh, the bonus? Uh, I'm going to I'm going to go pine. Um, I'm 
I'm going to go pine on one. <laughs> pine on one? Yeah. Oh, who's copping it? Uh, Kane's going to cop it, I think. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't oh. think... Uh, I think uh, they had too much experience and very good grass players, those four. So, uh, yeah, I think they'll play too good. Sorry, mate. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a big game for us. It's a real must win, I think, for our season. Um, so, yeah, I'll go us on two rings. I'll go myself to get beat as well. <laughs> um, yeah, um, similar. Hope, hopefully we get up uh, two rings for one. Um, Duna and Kane, obviously, to uh, keep making the season real easy for me, as they usually do. It's happened um, the last three years, hasn't it, mate? Yeah, sorry. No, I'm sorry, sorry. Mate. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, hopefully uh, Kano can uh, have a good win with Cody and Riley this week and keep our season moving in the right direction. Hmm. Who do you tip, Doge? I tipped Pine on one. Okay, well, I'm going Belmont. Um, I'm going to go Belmont on one and a half. I think, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think, I think Duna's going to have a big win. Um, Jacob's uh, going to have a draw, and can you just go on down? Uh, Dojo's called the loss there, so I've got to stick with him on that one. But, <laughs> yeah, no, Belmont on one and a half, I think. It's going to be a great game, but... Um, yeah, that could go either way, really. Well, that's, that's a cracker. Yeah, it's a good one. That'd be good. Alrighty, our next game was meant to be the Al Jester All Stars and Broad Beach Bulls, but that is uh, being played on Sunday, the 26th of February. So we'll just scoot right along on that one. And what looks to be our last round of the match, fittingly, we've got the Helensvale Hawks and the mighty Hamilton Power. So uh, they haven't got their ring draws done. These sides are just up as they are. But the skips for Helensville Hawks, we have, which don't need any introduction, of course. We've got Brett Wilkie, Nathan Rice, and Matty Lucas. Uh, Hamilton Power, a couple of changes to their sides. Brendan Wilson, Mark Armstrong, Armstrong and John Dojo Newell. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, so. I see Shannon's in the side this week. Shannon, Shannon, yeah, that's what, where's he playing? Yeah, oh, he's playing three for Matty Lucas. Age has okay. gone back to three for the Lurch is back. Yeah, Lurch is back. Yep. So they're even stronger than they're... last week. <laughs> that's good news for you. <laughs> where's um, no Nick this week? No Nick. Yeah, yeah, no, no Nick. No Nick? No. Ah, yes. I don't know where he is. We got Brenda back. He's, he's back <laughs> skipping. Ah, uh, yeah, Brennan. Just, so we, Jesse we'll, hasn't been playing three, has he? He's been, has he been leading or playing two? Uh, playing two. Playing two, yeah. Um, but yeah, we lost Nico for the week, so uh, Brendan's come back. We had Brendan out last week. He's come back in straight into skip, and Nick's out for this week, so back yeah. to full strength from next week. I'm pretty sure, but um, don't need to be full strength to beat these guys, mate. So <laughs> all good. Uh, well, I'm going to unfortunately tip our <laughs> Hawks on three. I'm going to go Helen Sale two one, but I'm. Uh, I reckon you're in for a big bounce back week, Doge. I reckon you're going to get up by 10 shots. Yeah. Um, Hawkey's on three. Doge, I don't think you'll make double figures. Ooh, <laughs> it's, get, it's getting real here. It's getting real. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, I'm going to go the power on one with the Doge pumping whoever he plays. <laughs> And well, that's it for our rounds. Might switch seats. <laughs> it, it, that is going to be a good game for you, Doge. Yeah. Like... That's it, it's where your season's sitting. It's probably not the game you want to be playing at this stage, but yeah, look, if if you come out and win that, it can really kickstart your year. Absolutely, yeah. And um, given uh, we're yeah we lose one of our back end players, it would be a, a big win for us. They are uh, bringing Shannon in, Lurch back. Um, they are a very now looking like a very very strong mm. team on paper. Uh, Kels has been in like. You know, career best form over the last sort of 18 months. Oh, she's scary, isn't um, she? <laughs> so, yeah, I still think uh, Matty Lucas has probably got the weakest rink there. Um, uh, Shan doesn't always play amazing on our surfaces over here in, in Australia, so Ooh. I'm hoping for a bit of a Ooh, bit of a cheeky little darky off digs, game. Yeah. And, uh, hey, CLD there. Hello, hello, Shan. That's this what uh, you want to do? Fire him up? Yeah, fire him up. That's right. <laughs> Um, looking forward to catching up with your brother. Um, yeah, so uh, hopefully we get up, but yeah, it's going to be a good one. Yep. Be a good tester. Yep. They're always good games to play in a way because you kind of, 
it's not not exactly a free swing, but you know in yourself you go out and play well. Hopefully you, you can get them, and they're they're like a the benchmark side. You know they they're expected to win at times. So yeah, you go out with that, you know, a little bit of a a different attitude. You can play with a bit more freedom at times and whatnot. Oh um, yeah, we, we lost by um, yeah no two and a half. We lost in the last bowl last year to Helensville at home, so we lost yeah. by a shot. Uh, we lost two games in one night by one shot. Helensville and Broadbeach on the same day by one. Mm. Uh, so that was a, that was a that was uh, a change our season too. So we want to try and reverse that this year and be the other way. But we'll see how we go. Yeah. Looking forward to this one. Yes, it should be a really good round. All in all, a few good matchups. Yeah, yeah some good games. Be really interesting. It's only only one game this weekend that's not being played, so it's starting to slowly. With a route, like I said, I think by round seven or eight we should all be pretty caught square up. and yeah, caught much. up. I think a lot of the delays are from the start of the season. So yeah, I think there might be one Burley North Wimmer game that's late, that's played early. That was for later. Here's a here's a trivia question. Simon Wallace just uh, put a, a question on the one of the comments. He he'd lo- he would so love to see an arm bowl represent PL one day. Is any been in an arm bowls in Premier League? It definitely has reserve grade. Yeah, yeah. Muzzy uh, had a couple in reserve grade. Yeah. I'm probably talking more premier grade, but none that I can remember because I know there's plenty of good players like Clayton Parker from New South Wales. Barry Ants, that's been one of the best I've ever seen with an arm. But it's yeah. an interesting question. Might happen one day, so we never know. I think it's just one of those things that most, I think all Premier League clubs go if you're playing well and if you're good enough then you play Premier League bottom line if you're winning games they can't say no forever can they Uh, hello Andy from Devon in the UK good to see you watching mate from overseas Um, yeah sad news uh, today with Don Chook Fowler passing away oh today was it yeah oh no yeah Uh, condolences Uh, there he was a member of Victoria Point when I was working there and great guy great bowler uh, he has been crook for a few years, but um, yeah, it's it all happened very suddenly. I, I think um, with the, yeah, with, I think he had some can- terminal cancer and it hit him pretty hard, pretty quickly. So sad news. Donny Donny Chook Fowl, a great guy, and I thought so with his family. Um, here's a good question uh, from Andy from the UK. He said you have streamed a lot of youngsters. Who would you say was the most impressed? Oh, Most impressed. To be fair, it's Impressive probably for... the two guys sitting next to me, actually. Yeah. Um, I've enjoyed watching them sort of go through their careers, uh, uh, watching their live stream games and a few of their games that I've watched the two boys beside me play, actually, mate. Uh, they've been really good to watch. We've had a couple of good and, battles. Um, yeah, we've, uh, not just playing the games, but also just to see them grow as uh, bowlers, and it's been pretty good to watch. So, yeah, probably these two for me. Yeah, and a lot of our... Uh, our guest last week, young Stevie Monk, who was on the show for a little bit. He, little Stevie, you yeah. know, he, he oh, loves seeing that young. Because it is, it, it's, it's hard. Like, yeah, there's been a number of junior bowlers I've known throughout my time that they start, they're involved heavily, come junior bowls, and then they turn that 18 years of age, and mm. you know, the whole world opens up to them. And a lot of them, they might give the game away, but they don't come back to it till later. But the ones that I think stick with it, you can tell the ones that are fair income about it, and they generally go on yeah. to much bigger things. So. I mean, what's your what's your yeah well, he's just turned 18 so uh, you know yeah don't worry about bowls now and go and gamble drink and <laughs> do all the things uh, I shouldn't <laughs> yeah I, I can't I can't answer to that but <laughs> no you know I probably a good thing for bowls as well which I think they have started is um, that bracket from like 18 to 25 you yeah, know okay. that that area of bowls um I don't think there's there's much for it, you know, like under 18s they've got nationals um, and all that, but under 25s there's not that much. Yeah, you might have a test series or something. still throwing the deep end, aren't you? Yeah, so obviously once you turn 18, you know, life changes work and that, but, you know, as a as a bowler, if you did want to progress half that, it'd, it'd be good mm. to have something just uh, between that age, I think, which I think, yeah, bowls, I, I think, I think the whole Queensland have brought something in to do with that or bowls Australia yeah bowl, like I think it's good that bowls they, the new nationals that they've introduced it was the first year this year where they had uh, like pretty much each Everything category had their, their four days to play their 
what well, in the open they call it the Ali Shield, so I think each event was different. But you play all states played off against each other. You had uh, under 18s, under 25s, open uh, over 40s, so over 60s. Yeah. So there's, there's a broad range of events that are, are getting out there. And but like you said, 18 to 25, it's a it's a funny time for young bowlers because the, the whole world opens up to them in in terms of you know alcohol and gambling and work and you know, everything yeah. changes for them so a lot of them do turn away from the game they find other interests but um yeah it's good to, that they you can keep some sort of competitive bowls from to keep that interest in it so um mate andy just go make a cup of tea and come back mate and then kane i'll give you the actual name of uh your question who your kid your junior yeah, who's your most impressed junior oh, yeah <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Let's go for an hour over here somewhere. Yeah, have a crumpet. There's have a tea. plenty of good juniors, but I must say, Riley, who's leading up for me in my rink, he's been absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, he's Fair. he's got a cr- crazy good future, I think. Jacob? Oh, look, honestly, I, I couldn't go past Kane because, like, you know, when I was younger, Kane used to want to play pairs for me, and it was always nice growing up. And you know, I was sort of a little bit better than Kane at first, and nowadays I'm just hanging on for dear life to play pairs with Kane, basically. So <laughs> no Kane's always, you know, interesting. But, I mean, th- there's been so many good juniors come through. Like, um, mm. And in my age bracket, when I was coming through, Nick Gosley, Dale McWinney, you know, all those fellas, yeah. Jesse Turnbull, Tyler mm. Pedbury, we're all still playing now. We're playing against each other yeah. every weekend in Premier League, and it's still really good to have that. John o. Davis was probably, he would be the best, I'd yeah. say. I haven't seen That's really fair. anyone better than that. I was just going to touch on too with that uh, that 18 to 25 bracket in Victoria actually coming up in April I think it is around Easter time they've got a 21 to 27 bracket where it's like hmm. a 10 person team for guys between 21 oh, yeah. and 27. Yeah. Um, Colin Lipton was talking to me about it and I think they're they're trying to get that one going this okay. year. So um, yeah. it's, it's a good, good idea. concept that yeah. they're trying to introduce. It's a good idea. But like you're right with the that bracket. I think like when I was at the states like the, like only what three years ago whatever it was, they were I think they put a request in to get like. I think at the time Olivia Rothwell was like 17 to go and play for the Queensland side 18 to 25s because there wasn't a, there wasn't eight girls to yeah. pick. They should do a nationals for under 25. I think. Hmm. Ah, uh, yeah, because there is that. Yeah, that 18. Then after that, you're right. There's yeah. just it's hard. Yeah. If transition. If, yeah. if you don't quite make it into mm. the open side once you turn 18, it's yeah. hard work from there. And especially at that age, it's a big hit to the ego too. Like it's yeah. easy to just throw your toys out and. Like it can be. Yeah. Like at that age. Sorry. Uh, Alfie Re-adjust does say, uh, right, Alfie Blossom, the <laughs> legend from uh, down at uh, Ballina. Alf, little Plays. legend. <laughs> big, big legend. Big legend. Uh, says, uh, Riley at the Blaze is an impressive youngster. Yeah. He is. He's a good, he's he's a good pick too. He is great. Uh, well and truly oh, carried my rank. Here's one for you, Sir Bakes a lot. Uh, Robin Farrell. Yeah. Lovely young lady. Uh, oh, Robin Farrell. Yeah. For my kids, Sean Ingham and Lauren, Bakes was their hero. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean was, Robin? <laughs> Come on, Nugget. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, definitely been, was. Yeah, um, well, yeah let's the, go there. the Ingham family was someone um, I met very early in my time in Queensland. I moved to Queensland when I was, what, 21 or something, 22. Narang Bowling Club. Uh, yeah, we had a great... Like we had Robbie Wild, Paul Peterson, David Wilcox, and then Sean Ingham come and join us, Anthony Fantini. Like we had a good little crew mm. there, and um, yeah, it was a great, great yeah. part of my life that I'll never forget. But yeah, Nuggets, he's still one of the better ones around, too. And not only his bowls, but he's a niggle. He's a good, little, good little niggle in him, Nuggets. He does. So. He does. <laughs> um, and I think after, it will be a was after he finds out that you've pumped him from the, the state force side too mate so yeah when he finds out it'll be a was your hero yeah. <laughs> a was um just thought i'd bring that up for you the nuggy gentlemen good question thanks andy what was your what was yours bakes just nugget uh what well, my yeah, junior yeah um actually I'll, I'll, i'm not just saying this because he's here but i will say kane actually my first time really coming across him uh, one of my first games for Gateway District, we played the district sides together. I had both of them actually, and I think Kane would have been 11. maybe 14, 11, okay, 11, <laughs> to make him feel old, thank you. Um, yeah, and I remember him, and he was brilliant too with his little blue twos or ones, whatever they were. It was 
Very impressed. So he's come a long way and he's only going to get better. So I'm looking forward to watching you in the next few years, mate. Mm -hmm. All right. Robin says, awesome. I think that was the, the young lady remark. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> um, Baker's dozen. Here we go. We, uh, we didn't have time to get the Baker's yeah, bobblehead up on the screen, but it's going to happen. I'll, um, I'd say we've been a little bit lax the first couple of weeks, but that's just me because... Well, things are busy these days, but I've, I've woke, written some questions this time. Uh, we've got the Nelson, the Nelson v. Kids. Nelson, the brothers here. Um, so I'll, get, I'll ask some questions and I'll get them both to answer. Uh, the first question probably being the most important, and I think most of the people want to know, uh, who wins backyard cricket when you play? Well, if we're talking, if it's legal rules, <laughs> I'm winning. When we play backyard cricket and I'm batting Jacob, Loves throwing full beamers with their oh, it's just brilliant. straight no ball, head. free hit. Yeah, so <laughs> it's, it's pretty fierce. Every every sport we play, I like trying to crank it up fierce. to about 150 off about a five yeah. meter length. <laughs> so I'm going after it. I'm, I'm not out there to make friends. Just, just just back of a length, mate. Just exactly. <laughs> I don't think I've ever pitched it up. The ball never swings when I bowl. Um. We, were, we were at the beach one time, and like the water was coming up, and we had it set up just down the like along the edge of the water, and yeah. Jacob. Jake was bowling like the real cricket ball straight through the <laughs> through the water. It was skipping right up. He's bowling bounces. You do, you bounces do the half at me. tape. You do yeah, the half tape. Take yeah. the tennis ball up. Yeah. Look, there's an the argument. Aussie, the Aussie way. There's yeah. an argument that Kane would win backyard cricket, but if you count it as scoring no runs because he just blocks out every yeah. ball, then I've, I've, got a, I've got a rock solid defence. <laughs> he's, he's that's, that's, well, that's test about cricketer. It. We, we need more test cricketers. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, a simple one: tomato sauce or barbecue. Barbecue sauce on a chicken sandwich with cheese. Oh, okay, yeah. nice. Depends what it, what it's on, but tomato sauce. I'd okay, say. tomato sauce. Uh, who's the smartest brother? Oh. Who, uh, you know, well, you both be pretty. It came was pretty quick tidy. to answer there, so we'll move right along. <laughs> so uh, I imagine you guys probably practice a fair bit together, one v one in a roll up. Who normally wins? I've got to be the luckiest bowler ever in the <laughs> Kane, Kane puts one close, and my, my straight-up tactic is to run him out, <laughs> which goes against everything I stand for when I actually play. But um, Kane is... Kane. They can usually just run as jacks. <laughs> non -stop. And Get, probably middles them too, yeah, I imagine. Yeah. 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 Gets into goes the, missing in games. Gets into <laughs> the game, goes back to the dwarf, and <laughs> in roll-ups is all out of time. Yeah. Uh, so, all right, we'll go back to a bit of Premier League. What's your favourite thing about Premier League? Um, and there's lots of different aspects in for the competition. For me, it's so. the atmosphere of Premier League, you know, the noise levels. Yep. Um, outside of Premier League, you definitely don't get that. So yep. just the yeah. atmosphere, the standard of players in Premier League is phenomenal. Mm. Um, for me, it's probably the camaraderie. Like, we've been at mm. Belmont for a really long time now, yeah. and I love playing with the same crew every 12 months. We always have a really good season. Everyone's got each other's backs. Yeah. So, you know, I just... Love well, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you understand the bowls world is normally rife with rumours. So you guys, yeah. you're sticking with Belmont for the time to come? No, no future plans at all? Not at this very moment. No. Yeah. Um, no none that you're going to give away? No. Break, breaking news on the bowl show. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> <Well, laughs> <can't escape. laughs> Welcome anytime. Uh, all right, moving on. Which, uh, which team do you love playing against most in the Premier League? Hamilton, for me, I think. You know, we we always have a cl close match. As I said, the last four years has come down right to yeah. the end. So, That's and um, good choice. Yeah. No matter where we're sitting on the table, it's always close. Like one one year, these guys were had you know Shannon and Tees in that we hadn't won a game. Jake was out. We managed to beat these guys, and then <laughs> the uh, the next year was same thing, but in reverse. And yeah. these guys beat us. And so yeah, it's always it's a good, good, good game. rivalry there. Good game. Yeah. You never know what the result's going to be. We say it all the time, but that particular game, they beat us. And they won on one up. rink, and we were sitting yeah. third on the ladder, and they won on one rink, and they hadn't won a game all season. They went, and we went from third to first after losing a game. And, um, <laughs> That's a special effort. To a team that hadn't yeah. won. Like, it was That's a special crazy. effort. That was it, a few years ago. It's yeah, usually yeah. the side that's actually lower on the table, too, that wins. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's it's always, always the side that's lower. That <laughs> Maury, Maury said that. Remember, we were like, oh, it's, yeah. you, you said that on Saturday night, and then, then we were like, who was, who was on the bottom? He's like, <laughs> Maury oh, they were. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Maury checked. <laughs> and their margin was smaller than us. Uh, so I imagine you've had lots, but what's one of your best bro moments on the green? State pennant. 
Stay easily, pennant. probably yeah. for me. Stay, like we yeah. worked really hard that season with a great group, and yep. you know, like me and Kane were sort of. You know, like, yeah. Stay pennant is great. Just uh, Belmont as a whole, just you know, playing with Jacob. Um, well, if they sort of and, and just the whole team of Belmont, like. Sort of kick-started your success you've had in the last couple of years, hasn't it? Like since that, sort of that state pennant, yeah. you're really, well, probably since winning the pennant first in your own district and going on to win the state pennant, it really, like yeah. Belmont now is, is probably considered one of the stronger clubs just from what you guys have built there and that's it. I also, um, I just enjoy playing like, you know, like we play Premier League and pennants, that takes up, that's a lot of representative yeah. bowls through the year. I just like getting to that November, December time, just playing a couple of pairs of yeah. pennants, you know, it just yeah. takes a... A yep. bit of stress out of this. <laughs> There's no pressure on it. You're playing for some money, which is always nice. Yeah. Like, if I get down the end, I just wave me hat around. And stop. <laughs> Throw the jack and clap, mate. <laughs> exactly. It's an easy gig. Really easy. I had chalked his boat up for the Puyallup Classic as your favourite, but yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, so, state, state pennant. Yeah, cool. <laughs> we went well this year. <laughs> I just struggled out. Oh, oh yeah, well, no good. <laughs> Dig as you're gone. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. All right, we're going back to your competitive spirit. Uh, who spits the dummy and flips the board when you play Monopoly? Or board games in yeah, general. Probably. Yeah, probably. You're, you're the dummy spitter, mate. Well, I lose the most, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Both of us. Yeah. yeah. It's, but, um, it, it's very competitive, our sport. Oh, I can so. imagine everything you do is probably pretty full on. Ping, ping, <laughs> ping pong. Ping yeah. pong's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Ping, ping pong, you get the like Joey down the other end, gets the racket, just whacks it straight. Down, you know? there's, there's an argument possibly that maybe K might have a few more dummy spits, but when I have a dummy spit, you do a proper, no. yeah, you do a proper, yeah. <laughs> All the toys are going. Get in the, the car, car and drive off. I'm not coming <laughs> nice. back for a while. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so who got the most trouble when you were kids? Who's the troublemaker? I'm thinking Kane, but because you're normally the big bro is a responsible one, isn't they? But. Are you, are you a bit of a secret uh, mischief maker? Um, or are you both just good? Yeah, I, like, I think we're both, both pretty, pretty, good. Pretty, pretty good kids. Greg, if you're watching, comment please comment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, what's next for the Nelson brothers? So you guys obviously both still very young, lots of bowls, new year, lots is coming up. Um, yeah, I suppose. I got, or is there something outside of bowls? I got happening? uni starting in June. Yep, yeah, if, so. what are you studying? Um, I'm doing an honours in law and justice in criminology. Ooh, yeah, very so. good. He might be listening to the brother. It's, might be, it's well, we might have to go back to that question in a couple of years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was going to say, a lot more changes for Kane because he's just sort of graduated, you know, he's just turned 18, so he's just yep. left that junior bracket. Um, yep. You know, he's probably got a, a lot more in front of him right now, yeah. bowls wise. I'm well, just, it's uh, going to be uh, it's going to be a big challenge for you too, mate, learning how to balance it all. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, it's... it's it's probably actually going to work better um, at uni than what it is at school. Cause, well, I imagine they're probably um, more flexible. Yeah, because I, hopefully, I'm still part of the Bowls Australia system. But like, um, <laughs> hit and hit Bowls Australia. <laughs> they, they, like, they can give me scholarships and um, like being part of that. I get like first selection into um, like certain days yeah. that I can study on, and I can take it a bit slower, and they only do like three or four days yeah, a week. Yeah, I think they do a lot more now um, these days in terms of yeah. players and, and, and pathways and, and all that, don't they? it's super flexible. Yeah. Whereas school is five days. If you weren't there for the exam, like it, it was quite difficult. That is a question for you. How many days of school did you miss last year? A lot. I was there. <laughs> I, I, was, I was away for more than I was there. Well, sure. I, when I went to school, I managed to miss 30 in one term. So. <laughs> I know it was from sport, was it? Was that from sport, was it? Yeah, sport, yeah. mate. Yeah, sport. Definitely. <laughs> I was a wagon at the local shopping centre, Dad. All right. What do, you, what, what do you both do outside of bowls? Obviously, we did, obviously probably touched on that a little bit down with your uni, but you've started a new job, mate? Uh, uh, yeah, so well, for the last I've, six um, months or so? Yeah, I'm with uh, QRO doing like payroll tax yeah. and betting, and I'm branching into like. Uh, uh, more Queensland revenue in the infringements, like your speeding fines and whatnot. Ooh, so uh, don't if you, speed. If you <laughs> might be able to help you out if you get any oh. fines in the future. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's been paid. Yeah, tick that box. <laughs> but yeah, to be honest, outside of bowls, like me and Kane, just we love sport. Yeah. So the tennis being on recently, the cricket at the Big moment. Big cricket like, fans, aren't you? Know, yeah. Just, yeah. Anything that's sports related, and um, and then we got a bulldog supporter, and uh, who do you follow your doggies as well? Yeah, <laughs> when you yeah, my, my missus is a bulldog supporter, so I feel you. Tim Sims, Tim Sims, Sims. Sims. yeah. <laughs> uh, what's your biggest pet peeve on the green? Now, when I say pet peeve, like one for me is 
if I go to call the head and the player's not standing in the mat ready to go, that's one of my pet peeves. So you guys got anything that uh, really bugs you on the green at all? Other than your position drawing Probably shot? Foot folding. Foot so folding, that's folding. a big one. It's getting, it real, it's, it's getting a, no, I'm glad you brought that up. It's getting to be a real problem in the game and someone there should be an investigation into this. 100%. This is just unbelievable. No, I don't know, just... Um, I'll take over for a second. <laughs> Jacob's ready. He's I'm ready, to ready to go. All my pet peeves. Um, no, I just um, for me it's just like short bowls kill me at the moment. I just I hate short bowls, and I'm I'm realizing more and more that they are. Well, particularly when we're playing Premier League and whatnot at times. Like I've been guilty the last. Like, yeah. I think it was about when we played Burley the other week. I uh, I got myself in a lot of trouble. Well, I think, I think they. I, I think we we all get annoyed one because we know that like okay everyone plays a short ball but when when you just keep doing it like that's mm. when it really does it starts getting annoying doesn't it just, like, just, six foot just throw it harder <laughs> like yeah. yeah so that's, um, that's definitely mine I think Kano's thought of a pet peeve here he probably just umpires and that getting in on rules that just aren't required at times you know like yeah um, having stickers on your bowls when you're playing a game like yeah. it just makes S silly rules makes, that don't or affect the game if, if you but do step there. over the fault by that much it yeah. just doesn't affect anything and getting in on those and when it's just not required well um, you wouldn't believe how many umpires have come to me at the end of a game say hey mate just just a quiet word but do you know that you foot fault <laughs> really <laughs> what no i no no mate come on you're not, not watching closely enough show me a photo next minute ubc come out with all <laughs> all right last <laughs> off um who wins plq if it's not belmont Uh, the logical answer is Brody, but mm -hmm. I think that Burley will go back to back. Actually, actually I think we, haven't had, we haven't had a back to back for some yeah. time, have we? So if if anyone's going to do it, they probably got the team to do it. I just think they're they're really well rounded across the board, and they got some they are, they're very star, balanced star you know, skips and. And I do need to give him raps because Dean McWinnie got very upset saying um, I'm not back. And I'm like, yeah, we've got a problem. I don't have a problem with Burley, mate. Just got to take the underdog, buddy. <laughs> we just don't like him. <laughs> we are well, that's it for a Baker's Dozen. Uh, Nelson Brothers, thank you very much. Good sports. Just one word answer from you two boys because I've got a couple of questions from a couple of viewers. Um, uh, reversing the question, who, did the, the, who do you guys uh, aspire to? Uh, who did you aspire to? Dad, yeah, always like to be as good as. Oh, sorry, it was the end of the question. Oh, yeah, no. sorry, <laughs> sorry, Greg, Dabby. you're gone. Poor <laughs> yeah. oh, Dad. Um, I don't know. I, for me, it was Bates. actually Bates okay. when I was like younger. Oh, yeah, like, what do you mean was? What's all this was tonight? <laughs> still is. Um, yeah, like we played. Still looking beat him now. Yeah. So he used to be mine too, but. Uh, um, I um yeah we played pennant together when like I was far younger and um, yeah district sides I've always just liked the way Bates plays and yeah I think it's great so it is crazy going, ten year dates going red over it fair down mine has always actually been Wiz since I was about yeah, twelve it's... or thirteen like Wiz did a fair bit of work for me when I was younger yeah, and well, you know I, just the way he goes about it and I whatnot. find you and Wiz very similar I mean, probably yeah. in, in your deliveries so yeah you're both like quite technical you know. You know, like there's some deliveries that you wouldn't try and coach in anyone, prime example, yes. but yeah, but you and Wiz, like you're both very technical, you're both, you know, you're quite compact, very simple delivery, Not, you know, nothing about it that really gets you into too much trouble, that's why you hit the line so often, but you know, I, I, yeah. that doesn't surprise me a bit with Wiz, just, actually. It's, just quickly, there was one point when Wiz was doing a bit of coaching with me, and I said, oh, I'm having a bit of a... Is she trying to get me arms through? And Wiz just said, this is what I do. <laughs> so I just did what yeah. Wiz did. Yeah. That's probably why. There you go. Like so, uh, yeah. That's fair. One word That's answer. Fair. Yeah. Good. <laughs> good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, heat, heat of three for 51, just mind you. 66 off 67. Chances. Oh. Chokes on. Chokes. Chances. Uh, yeah, well, he says someone riding a ball is his pet peeve. Um... <laughs> Who's that? So next time we play him, we'll ride a bowl. <laughs> oh, yeah, well. Hey? Wally Schmidt. Wally Schmidt. Yeah. Oh, Wally, well, you get cranky. He'll be right. Can tell a joke. Yeah. Sorry, can send a joke. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that, Wally. Yeah. Um, Good idea. 
All right, so Baker's Dozen, yeah. Uh, well, Breaks My Bowls. I've got to break my bowls. Oh, yes. Yeah, I haven't done one of these for a while. Uh, and it always We're bringing is, all the good ones back. Um, well, one is I still don't think there's enough carry-on from the skippers. Uh, you need to be go above and beyond. Like, when you're carrying on, just go, in Premier League especially, go a little bit more. Get the atmosphere <laughs> going. Make it, uh, make it worthwhile. So later on when it gets too far, we can always turn it down a notch. But for now, to get people watching, like, go nuts. Jeez. Brendan Egan, jeez, make some bloody... <laughs> <laughs> something. Give something, do not. Um, just... No, but the real thing is, is penance. We were talking about it before before the show started, and um, it sort of come back. It really died off for like two or three years, where it wasn't much. People sort of a lot of members and players sort of like, yeah, I don't really care if I play penance, like yeah, whatever. Yeah. It wasn't really, you know, it didn't have a goal. It's come back a long way in the last sort of two or three years, but I reckon now is like a great opportunity, and it breaks my balls that like something more hasn't been done to sort of boost that competition back up again. Where Make it open. I don't know. Open, I don't Can know. It, yeah, of course it does, mate. Why? It's 20, why? Because it's 2023. And why can't... A, like, and for example, say you know, whether you, whether she's 12 or 112, but a female can't represent their club competitively on a Saturday at all outside of Premier League. But again, that's not a Bowls Queensland or Bowls Australia sanctioned event. Like A woman can't represent their club Unless they take a day off work or a day off school, or they're yeah, retired. But it goes. And but it goes no, bigger it's than not, that. No, hey? It goes bigger than that for them, though. Like, why? So why can't they have a ladies' event themselves though on a weekend? They and could, yes, on, but depending on Tuesday, is, is. But why don't they? Why can't they just change the rule to have panels on Saturday? Well, what, well, what's wrong with just making everything open? Like, wouldn't you rather see, like, a club, for example? And I'll use Victoria Point as an example. Like we had maybe seven grades in the men and one, possibly two, in the women. Well. For a small club, you can have the full eight or nine grades then. Like, rather than having, again, still seven seven grades of men and one or two grades of ladies that may be playing in the morning, which it, it could be a, stay, a step towards making it open. And this is only my opinion. This is not for anyone else. But like you look at clubs like uh, states like Victoria or Melbourne that have made their pennant open for a long time. You, you see the clubs that put up their photos of their game. Like you see lots of... A 25 to 45 year old men and women having a drink after the game, enjoying themselves. You know, it, it, it added a lot more atmosphere to the clubs because, like everything in life, if you do get more women involved, generally you get partners and brothers and family members and other men involved, and I think it'll just boost everything. And like bowls is not one of the is one of the few sports where your physical attributes mean nothing in the game. Like. Yeah, I reckon it should be open as well. I mean, yeah, be, definitely. It should be great for women's bowls as well. You know, Women, it, if you only have to be in play. Queensland for the last ten years to see how much ladies' bowls is dying. Well, uh, in, uh, in so what, including them independence, like it's gonna. I don't agree with that at all. Like I think we have everything else is already open. We run carnivals that are open. We run Premier League exactly. That's open. So why is independent open? Well, because it's like Test match cricket. Well, it's not. It is. No, no it's not because it's you don't. It's a traditional thing that you play yeah, on a traditions. weekend. The thing traditions is, though, an excuse, yeah. mate. Like so t- test match cricket. Do not do your work, mate. Tres- <laughs> test <laughs> match you cricket. Can't have a mate. Your, your physical attributes pay dividend in the game. I'm not saying that. Whereas bowls, it doesn't. It has nothing to do with it. I Zero. Saw, I, yeah. So why is it separated? It wouldn't be safe no. to play women. Like women's cricket, no, with it, men's cricket, like, it, in all honesty. And in all due respect to, like, what, Alyssa Healy, one of the best female players, or Alyssa Perry, sorry, mm. is she going to be working Mitchell Stark or that around the, like, you know, like, there's a, there's an obvious physical difference in that, whereas bowls, there's none. There's, I don't think there's a physical difference in bowls, but there's a bowls difference in bowls. Because they don't get enough competitive games because mm. they can't play on weekends. No, no, and the size, that obviously the size of the bowls. Like bowls like, are easily manoeuvred when they're smaller. Like They, they, they go a lot, lot further, oh, different shots. Clutching now. <laughs> oh, okay, well, if you want to go that way, okay. Well, it, how many carnivals are open? Like, there's lots, right? No, big, big, not all big that ones, many. But big not ones? all that many. The big ones? Mm, not really, oh, no. Yeah. It's well, like what? What are the big? What are the big open carnivals? Like all your state events are still gendered. Your Australian Open, yeah, okay, but money like tournaments, tournaments, tournaments. tournaments. Yeah, there's a few, a few tournaments around, yeah. but still, there's still lots of traditional. And I'm not saying make every part of bowls open. I'm just saying, the pennant, 
and for the betterment of clubs, particularly coming with a small club background, I think opening pennants up is going to benefit the game for everyone. I, I think pennant is like test match cricket and it should stay the same and... Uh, well, ladies we just bowls need, and we just need to work harder on. Well, that, that, well, that doesn't making well, it making it open doesn't is not the answer to like increasing ladies playing the game. Well, I think like, it will. I think you'll get a lot more working women involved. Why can't they just change it to a Saturday? I don't want to get like, my, have have you, I don't want to get myself into trouble. Want. But have you ever gone to a ladies' day? Yeah, it's just I that's have. all I'll say. Like, okay. So why, but why can't they, why can't that change? Well, if you're... Because it's, because it's lawn bowls and, again, they, they're they working off the tr- traditions that you mentioned earlier. I'm not saying, yeah, I understand. I, I There's an argument for this, absolutely. There is, because, oh, we could talk about this all night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm all for many big competitions, like Premier League and everything, that being open gender, like, and, that, and I love it. Like, that's, I, I like it that. But there is, should be one event and the traditionalists, like, at Pennant... Yeah. We, could be like a test, yes, like test state match cricket, titles, where Australian it, Open. Yeah. Your your major events like your state titles and your Australian Open can stay yeah. gender specific at the moment, but pennant is a stepping stone to increasing those events. I feel like in their ability yeah, and whatnot. That's fair. You know what I, I think you see. I think you see the level of well, yeah. the reason club we don't representation have as many getting women. to those points. We don't think, have as many women. I think you see the strength in ladies' bowls improve yeah. too. Like you, 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 okay, you can name like the top. 10 to 15 female bowls in Queensland like can you name any more like there's not like there's not like there's a big drop from your top bowlers around yeah. to the next and I think if you included ladies in, in and pennant it, yeah. and like, you made their, it their open quality will get better. I think their quality yeah. will get a lot that's better fair, that's it's fair that's fair they don't have a like clear they, they ain't got enough com- yeah well, and there's not enough competitive bowls around. for where them where are there other opportunities the bowls, you know? what do you mean a- so junior, if we didn't go to pennant yeah. So we have Premier League. Yeah. Premier League, keeping in mind, is this higher standard, whereas yeah. like Pennant, you've got all your grades yeah. to work through and whatnot. Where are there other opportunities for the open events and whatnot? Like, because yeah, carnivals are a completely different concept. I'd, I'd be bold enough to say that if you open Pennant, you'll find a lot more ladies in Premier League in five years' yeah. time. Well, it'll just progress. Women, you'll get more women playing bowls because it's a... You know, for women playing in women's pennant, it's not that environment that men's pennant creates. It's definitely not like when you go. And they have to take a day off work, like. Yeah, and then at, yeah. especially if you're a junior. You know, and I can see what you're saying. Like I, I was. But why can't the, why can't still. the sport or the game work on that gender to make it as good as the men? Well, well that like be. without including should, in, the other in, in the, the other perfect oh. world, they probably should. But to get nothing's there, perfect, to get and I, I just think. I know. I just think. Are that they, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to go down that path. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll start while we're ahead. I've probably offended enough people Let already. Uh, I think I have. Uh, like, no, no. I do. Like, I love the Premier League being open. That's how it should be. I just said there is some, like, one event, like, uh, where it's that competition. Oh, well, then, you look, you go to other extreme and bowls. The, the epitome of bowls is you, one extreme of open pennant to. So, does that mean the Commonwealth Games should be open as well? Like,. That's another far stretch. I don't think every high pinnacle event should be open, but I think in a competition like pennant, that the biggest benefit of the pennant event is bowls in Queensland and, and clubs in Queensland. And if, if, we're, if we're serious about trying to improve clubs and we're trying to help them, which we spoke about last week in terms of bowls administrations not doing enough for the club, well, maybe something like that might take might help in, in paving the way to that but again this is only my opinion I uh, say so lots of stupid things so I could be wrong but I just think it, it'll be a, a huge huge bonus for the game if we can just open pan it up we can still have your big events individual like your, your gendered because personally I like it as well from a from my own perspective I, I enjoy being out of the green with the boys and whatnot but for the betterment of the game I can certainly see that I think opening pennant is the way to go, but it's my my opinion. Yeah, like the comments coming through from the from some well, ladies. They'll be going off now. Well, <laughs> who's you know what? Here's like, in I'll read them out here because it's uh, it's interesting because you've got like uh, Ro- Rosie Rickson. You go back, you get it. Jana says that uh, you guys have more people your age to change things. It's very hard for students and working women to play at that level on weekends. That's why PL is so great and it involves women in it. I uh, totally agree upon gender penance would be great. 
uh, I wouldn't bring a non-bowler my age to a ladies day but I'd bring them to an open comp uh, Phil says well said Bakes like so the girls are just like giving their opinions like that like it's oh, and I, I can bet you there's a lot of blokes out there that are have probably typed three or four comments and then put it deleted back. them all Absolutely. and just put yeah. the phone yeah. down because when you, if you look at it like they're saying like you know, uh, social media if you say something wrong you can be a lot of backlash but we uh, like to be honest uh, it. it's I very think, hard for students and working women um, I wouldn't bring a non-bowler to ladies day like why wouldn't you bring a bowler to ladies day why but why can't you change that why why haven't you girls like the younger uh, yeah, generation but, got the power to sort of say well hey like yeah, you know yeah. if you want to play at this level you know the, the boys have done it. Like yeah, but you're talking about too. changing a whole Who, demographic. Has of, that not already happened admitted. with the men? Yeah. It was at that stage too. We used to give chickens away and wear our whites. Oh, of course. Like, yeah, and look, the introduction of colour bowls and all the, uh, I'm there through it all. But I, I think you like it's basically mathematic. Like your selection pool is completely different. You have say a thousand bowlers of men to pick from in for a sport, and then you have. 50 women like obviously your selection pool is so small and that's where to start with the open pennant there wouldn't be an awful lot there'd be a lot of clubs that are against it women going getting picked there'd be a lot of arguments but I think it's time just to bite the bullet introduce it and I think in five years time you'll see a massive result from it but again like I've told other people before yeah, just I, because I, New South Wales and Victoria do it doesn't make it right no I, I very rarely pay any attention <laughs> to what Victoria and New South Wales are doing but I listen to, to other people and people I respect and I, I'd like to pay attention. I think I've been involved in the game long enough to have an opinion. <laughs> no, I'll see, up. see, Rosie says, like, they won't play on weekends. Like, they at least have to play. And, like, and that'd be a great start. If, if Who's, it, they, if it just, Who's they, though? Who's they? Well, yeah, look, how many... Yeah, you've been involved in clubs, Joe. You know, how many ladies' clubs say, yeah, we support working women, you know, uh, we're going to run club championships on the weekend... Where we're behind it, and then they, when the club championships come around, they card it for a weekday, and they say just organise it with your opposition. They'll be agreeable. Next minute, your opposition's not agreeable. Ladies get forfeited out of club competitions because they can't take a day off work and play on a Tuesday, and that's only one small example. Like, yeah, but you're looking at it the wrong way. Like, all, all I'm hearing is excuses and no, reasons why we need to change the men's spend. It's like, mate, just. Change the way the women think about the game. Like, oh, yeah, but do you not see the difference in those statements? Like, change men's penance or change how completely how a whole generation you're, of people. But you're think. just asking to change like a whole generation of men's penance no, so you can not. include I'm, like I'm, open I'm, events. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm asking to improve the competition. You, you think it's going to improve the competition? I think it will. Yeah. Or you, it, it, I think it'll help. Clubs. Will it improve so, the competition or will it grow the game? Like, or both? You think it's going to do both? I think it'll more grow the game than improve the competition. I think the growth in the game is probably the, going to be the biggest benefit of it. But I think, yeah, it'll, it'll definitely improve the competition for the ladies. And I think it'll probably improve a lot for the men because, you know, all the men, when they start getting beat by the ladies, might start putting a bit more practice in. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, so that was Breaks My Bowls. Uh, that is totally... That was totally, a good one. That was a good one. That was a good <laughs> one. Um, I... Totally think that we should have an open pennant, and um, I just didn't have a topic for breaks my bowls, and I really wanted a good one, so I had to go down that path. But it worked out really good. Um, cool. Don't, uh, don't lie, we rehearsed it. We're here from two nah, o'clock. I literally in the uh, rehearsing. spoke to the voice beside me before we started. And went, what don't you like about the game? And, uh, so I went, hmm, that sounds like a good talking point. Let's do that. Um, so yeah, sorry about that, but. Um, it worked. It was good. It's going to get a lot get of people of comments talking. anyway. It's like, well, we, we, we love interaction. We love hearing yeah. what people think. We love, you know, just being here and, and talking a bit of rubbish and stirring a few people up. But don't forget to like and share the page and get it out there and comment. And <laughs> Yeah, women's bowls definitely dying off in some. Like, districts only field eight. Uh, that's, that's our district uh, where we play in our club. Uh, we're the only district in the state that play with eight. Um, and that is frustrating. Well, yes. just just to, like, well, I've got Jade Grunowich, should 100% be open pennant, and Brett Spur that says, very well said, Sean Baker, and we all know Spur is a legend, so yep. Spur is on board. And, yeah, Spur is a legend. Nothing ever has come good out of his mouth. Yeah, no, <laughs> I love you, mate. You're a legend. Um, Jacob, buddy. You know, you're my brother. Spits. Um, 
Uh, I love Sperry though. <laughs> yes, legend. Uh, the women have been has been going. Uh, sorry, the women issue has been going on for years. It would be great if clubs would come to the party, but hey, oh, it's got nothing to do with clubs. It's both Queensland pure. <sighs> the women issue have been going. Has been. But these are all women saying like what the issues are, but like because they're probably the ones that know. <laughs> step up. Yeah, because really, like I know myself, I. How, how much attention you... I know, probably a little bit different you because you spent time with the Bowls corner and you built your ladies' clubs, so kudos to you, but... Um, that worked out well for you me. You know, how many, how, many, <laughs> how many clubs pay attention to their ladies' club, really? Particularly when you get outside of the Gold Coast. I don't know, what's your yeah. ladies' club like at Belmont? It's, Have you got it's, one? It's separate. <laughs> Our two yeah. clubs are separate. Yeah. I think... Yeah, we're an open club, though, Hamilton, so we, we wanted that. Yeah, um, and like, it's, it's great. And we don't play grade eights because of it. Summer competition's open for us, so if uh, grade eights, they, they don't play open, they play men's. Okay. They, they play men's and women's, but they they play, yeah, it's men's and women's. Where So we stay with Q7s for that reason, because they are an open tournament, and we play our summer tournaments open. Yeah. Um, and we stuck by that, and, and that's the reason why we do it. Well, you guys play pennant on a weekend, don't you? We do, Yeah. Definitely but, for me, like, when I started, like, as a junior, you know, it was, there was a lot clearer path through the men's bowls, being able to just go into Div 1 and, like, the the quality and the, the atmosphere, like, it's an enjoyable environment, our Div 1 bowls, like, men's Div 1 bowls, whereas for, like, a junior, a ladies' junior coming through... Well, you, you would have known a lot of them through yeah, your you, time, or...? You'd never... You know, playing on Tuesdays to start with is that's definitely wrong. That has to be sad days. Yeah, like that's got to be sad days. Um, but there's there's nothing there from playing their Div One bowls there because it's as as a junior the environment in the women's Div One pennant it's not it's not there. It's yeah. not it's not an atmosphere that. I'm, I'm sure that's not. But, but yeah, see yeah. again, like that's just the they, thing they where it's just, oh well, it's not there, so we'll just let them play with the men, like because yeah, but, you know, you that'll, could, that'll make it better. If they did open, it would progress it. Then it's maybe filthy. after five. <laughs> He's not happy. Yeah. Breaks my balls, man. I my no, balls. I just look. I just. It'd be a good way to get it kicked off. Maybe like, so after five or so. I just, I just don't see what that, the big worry is in it. Like, and and probably even a bigger issue, which might be a break our balls next week, which is you can only win a state pennant flag if you play Division One. Yeah. There's a couple of good points here. So, um, uh, like Janelle Jones says, uh, Gateway ran an open pennant, uh, night pennant last year, which was a good start. Yeah. And that is a good yep. start. That is good, that is yep. absolutely a really good start. On a Wednesday. Um, and uh, Maddie Blythe uh, yeah. from uh, Higgins from Northern Suburbs, I think at the level you play Doge, it is an okay argument, but at the bowl, at the lower levels, it will speed up the improvement in the ladies' game yeah. if there is an open pennant. I agree with that too. Um, I think that. Uh, there should be an elite level for men's and ladies and then below that an open gender which I, I think some districts have gone down where it's I think Cunningham do that Cunningham play division um, one and I think that's a good trial point like I think that's a great start yeah. to do that and it, is, it, it um, may save just from the you know introducing it and hoping for the best because I'm a bit of a rip the bandaid off type just do it and what will be will be but you know if it needs to be slowly introduced so be it but I think something definitely needs to be done there to assist with ladies' bowls because it is, it's... In an ideal It's world, a strong word, but you say it's, it's a form of discrimination where, you know, a schoolgirl can't represent a club at a competitive level where a schoolboy can, so... Yeah. And it, it, yeah, it's just not right. Yeah, yeah whether he to five for 77, 40 or 43. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> May better get going so we can watch, We better get going so uh, we can watch that. At the... Uh, <laughs> Isaiah says, at the moment, even at an established ladies' club, there are limited numbers for comp- competition and get told, don't bother joining, irrespective of your abilities. It's a big statement. Oh, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's not healthy, ladies' bowls. Oh, I, I totally agree. I totally agree it's not, not healthy. healthy. It is all. not healthy. Um, and it's so easy for them to just jump back on that on that non-healthy bandwagon too and... Uh, because uh, it's what they're used to. They don't know any different. Yeah. They're not used to the culture that the boys, like that sort mm-hmm. of side of it has, like... Um, yeah, it's. Just, I think the, they're still stuck. I think the best thing about moving ladies' pennants, whether it be to Saturday morning or a weekend game at some time, or open, is that they can still run a ladies' Tuesday pennant and call it whatever they want. Similar sort of event for the ladies that are stuck in their ways and refuse to play on a weekend and want to play on a Tuesday. Like you can still run something like there's 
Yeah, I mean, nothing, nothing, nothing stopping him from doing that. No, exactly right. So, so, yeah, that's why if you want to win a state pennant, whether it be ladies or men or open, you should be playing on a weekend for your, your state pennant. Yeah, this one will at least allow the opportunity potentially. Exactly right. If it fails, well, at least you said, well, we'll give it a crack. We didn't just continue on with the way things were. <laughs> uh, I've, yeah, Genesis Div 2 Open would probably be stronger than Ladies Div 1. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. It's because you've got guys playing. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, it probably would be. That. You expect anything less? <laughs> it probably would be. <laughs> <laughs> it probably would be. Most definitely. Um, I guarantee it would. Maybe outside of one or two sides. Taking nothing away from like other people too, like Lenny Clark does some absolutely wonderful yeah, things. Look, so that's what I mean. Like, like you can name the, the top. I'll be generous, say twenty. I mean, like that does work with the girls too, though. Like and different people. Yeah, well, mm. Lenny probably well understands how hard it is to work your way through it. And I, I can't imagine the amount of times Lindsay has spent on the green thinking, "What in the world am I doing here, playing this?" this game with these people but you know it's, it's worked for her she's worked her way through and she now she's probably go down as one of the best ever to come out of Queensland and you know she's she, I'm sure she yeah. enjoys it most when she do, she does play open bowls and she gets to have a chance to play a bit more competitive because it is, it's a different style of game like she makes a good point when she, she says also yeah it's so it, it makes the ladies better yeah you're right like if um, you're playing with higher standard it's going to improve yeah. your balls and that's just, that's not doesn't matter what gender you are like it, if you're boys or girls no, it yeah, does happen any sport yeah. the, the more competitive you yeah. play the better you get but I just think it'll, it'll probably change the style of the way a lot of the ladies play too like they are somewhat defensive like I have seen it a number of times watching their <laughs> this social is a bowls. Topic like, at the moment. Oh, we um, one down. We got five seconds. Draw the shot. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, come on. Helen Wood Bradley says BQ is the greatest obstacle to overcome. Re- refuse to change. Older ladies tend to use this as an argument to stop changes from happening. The younger women have a tough road ahead, but it will happen. Oh yeah. We're not trying to target anyone and say that there are just older ladies. Like there are, I've met so many wonderful old ladies in the game. But there is, no matter what club you go to, there's always a small group of them that just. And it doesn't have to be older ladies. It can be younger ones too. But mm. probably more often than not, it's the more mature age. But yeah, every single club has that small group of ladies that just make things so difficult. At the end of the day, we need to have a forum. Like I think a, forum, a yearly forum where people can attend and like give their opinions and options and mm. they really get looked at and then sort of sh- you know sh- sifted through to like the best ones and good ones because like ideas like that that could really make a difference to you know authorities or whoever standing up and actually doing yeah. something or working out what's going on so yeah oh, just... now you can make as much noise as you want mate. Someone, someone <laughs> doing a bump slap on <laughs> get your live in five person for next week yeah yeah there we go um, <laughs> anyway so yeah good, yeah that was a great good topic segment, yeah well segment. done Doge my balls yep. my balls um, of course we'll go from uh, that to something much more pleasant the charity round um, our charity round is going to be played over three weekends mainly the first two of mm. the 10th uh, so the 18th of the second and the 25th of the second which will be the home games. So your yeah, home was, teams will be... Yeah, we had... Um, um, yeah, had sorry, a, if you can get your... All clubs need yeah. to get your charities to the Premier League by the 10th. So two weeks before your charity round, can you let the Premier League know, please, what charity you have chosen for your club? And um, don't forget, uh, the best, whoever raises the most money gets in a bonus $500 donated yeah. by Premier League to their charity of choice, so... Bit Perfect. of extra incentive there to really push hard, and yeah, make sure you email it through to Bruce, your charity. He'll uh, he'll be right on top of you otherwise. Not literally, but <laughs> I always want to bust out the Bruce song. You know the song that's got Bruce in it. Anyway, <laughs> cool. Um, so yeah, charity round. It's gonna be a cracker. I'm looking forward to everyone getting up. Um, I want to see someone do like a silly socks or something like. I know my kids when they go to school they do you can get those like oh, socks yeah. that you got like cars and stuff sticking off them and they like come up to your knees. Imagine a whole a whole twenty eight players wearing like something like that'd be pretty cool. Um, just for a game, that'd be pretty fun. 
uh, yeah, so charity round. Anyway, uh, comments were great. Boys were awesome tonight. Probably time to wrap it up, Bakesy, I reckon. Yeah, mate, watch the, uh, watch the heat choke in this. And Five overs to go, probably. Yeah, 31 or 33. Six yes. wickets anyway, down, there's lost another goals. wicket. They're yeah, gone, okay. yeah. Good luck to all the clubs Can on the weekend. Choke. Uh, we will go through our sponsors just quickly one more time. Of course, <laughs> yeah. our favourite sponsors of the show, Smith & Co Realty. Uh, best realtors down here on the Gold Coast. So make sure you go and see them if you're buying or selling. They are the best. Paradise Point Bowls Club, the Dolphin Cove. Uh, host the bowl show, so thank you for all your support. And Club Paradise Musgrave. Point. Club Muzzy. I see you forgot before. I, I did not. I said host, the, host of the no, Premier League no, no, finals. No, Robbie, no, don't encourage him, Robbie. Uh, BCI, <laughs> BCIB. And, of course, the Nanning Rights, hence the light choice of champions. So uh, thank you guys for your sponsorships, and uh, we hope you have a great week. Good luck at the, uh, with your bowls on the weekend. And... Make sure you get down if you're not playing to as many Premier League games as you can. Definitely. Um, like also, and share the page. Yep. Yep. Don't like forget, and share the page. The old share. Uh, thanks Tag for your comments. friends. And thanks for the boys for coming yeah, on the show. Yeah, boys. Always nice. a pleasure Superstars. catching up with you. It's been good. A couple of and, future gates. And, and good luck to everyone that's uh, representing in uh, the Max Morris and Q7s on the weekend too. So well done to you guys for getting in. So, um, And the last thing, of course, uh, our number one uh, live stream team, the Gold Coast District live stream. Who uh, do such events as us, Premier League, the brilliant in the behind that camera? They did a lot of work, States, Robbie. So everything. So uh, well done, Laurie. Well, I think they're pretty much booked out for the rest of the year now. So uh, a couple of yeah. weekends free that Robbie's not telling us about, so he can play some balls himself. And so, just uh, don't stand in front of the yeah. camera and speak up. Whatever you do. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great weekend. Enjoy your balls, you and uh, we'll see you next week. Love your work, you guys. Save the news.